Hello and welcome to me going through yet another lot of my my records here. As you can tell from the from the title, it is mid to late 80s Olivia Newton John. And there's a reason why I chose to do this. And I think we'll go with the second single from Soul Kiss just to um show why. Have had a bit of toughening up with her hair looking like a, a sort of mop type thing. It's kind of, what on earth was she thinking with that? I know Buffon had his hair was something, but dear, oh dear. Maybe it's meant to be look that way because of being backlit. Who knows? But um, whoever, whoever was the stylist that advised her, I think they probably would have been duly sacked when you... <laughs> Maybe she's trying to look tough, or maybe she's trying to rock the Tina Turner look and it just didn't quite work for her. <laughs> it could be it. Yeah. So she's telling us to toughen up. That's kind of like, yeah, toughen up, please. But the first single from Soul Kiss um, is this. Soul Kiss, funnily enough. So again, it's kind of, you think she's there, she seems to be going for that. Uh, sort of shaved sides and stuff like that look because as you can see here looks like she went fishing and got caught in her own line <laughs> hey let's let's go fishing for let's go fishing for some livy oh <laughs> sounds too close to liver doesn't it uh but anyway let's flip it back over flip it back over to the front cover there i must admit it's an interesting cover. it looks like she's been crimped into oblivion yeah, it's um, pretty a little bit underrated this time. But I remember the clip, and um, it was very kind of. Ah, oh, it was. It wasn't really widely broadcast, but I do remember the clip was very, very kind of Madonna esque, you know, with the, with the sexualization of it and stuff like that. But still, quite a good song. And next up is, the best of me with. Morton Hark, oh, I mean David Foster. Well, it does look a little Morton Harkatish, doesn't he? Harkatish. Mm. But it sort of looks like Livy's had a bit too much of the old lemon juice in the hair, or she's tried to blonde already blonde hair. Don't know. But um, the best of me that was uh, wound up being done by Cliff Richard. Actually, he took it and decided, yes, I'm a friend of Olivia, so I might do it. Started with their duet with Suddenly, maybe. But yeah, David Foster, you just kind of expect him to just start singing Take On Me at the drop of a hat, don't you? Or maybe he thinks Livy's sun shines on TV. Next up, this was for the Bicentennial. It's always Australia for me. And if you it, back in the day, you could even have a... There was an instrumental on the other side. So you could do yourself a bit of um, karaoke to what was a very, very cheesy song um, with the final lyric of It's always Aussie for me. I was like, oh dear, oh dear. I've got a funny feeling that at the time, um, I, I could be wrong with this one, but um, it's, I sort of remember at the time of where she was interviewed for the, for the single and she was quoted as like, I wrote all the lyrics. And just the way we read that at school was like, ooh, <laughs> she wrote all the lyrics. Well, it's always Australia for me. <laughs> yeah, she wrote all those lyrics. But notice how she put the crimper at home and decided, no, we'll just have a normal hairstyle. Next up, I actually really like this song, but it didn't really go very well, uh, very far. It's The Rumour. And it was written by Elton John, Elton John and Bernie Talk, but Nick Harnaf too. I think Elton does the backing vocals on this. And yes, two ninety nine. <laughs> that was the recommended price too. Yep, couldn't go over that. You couldn't charge three dollars. That wasn't the recommended price. No, I think I'm kidding. But I always thought that because this was released in 1988-89, I always thought that this was just basically Elton's take on the, all the crap that happened with him for the the sun. And it's like, well, I can't sing this, so let's just get somebody else to sing these lyrics. <laughs> so dear Olivia got it. 
sort of rocks the denim there. Either that or she didn't apply her lipstick very well, and that's one way of hiding it. Next up is Can't We Talk It Over in Bed? This wound up becoming Talk It Over by Grace and Hugh. It's like she had the first version of it, and Grace and Hugh took it, I think it was a year later, something like that, had a hit with it, and kind of left Livy you know, to kind of languish in the background. Last but not least, we've got Reach Out For Me. And it's like, reach out. <laughs> and, um, oh, that's the B-side. The flower that shattered the stone. Um, hmm. I wonder if that's past tense or not. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this was for Warm Town, uh, and I think it was like a children's album or something like that. There she is, looking like a bridesmaid lost in a field. But yeah, it's uh, the song itself was written by Bert, uh, Bert Bacharach, How David, so Bacharach David song. Well, duh. Can't remember how well this went, actually, because I thought these knew. Yeah, so that was that was what it was for, Warm and Tender. <laughs> With a title like that, if it was in the earlier 80s, you'd think that Warm and Tender would mean something else. Like, well, Warm and Tender. When in actual fact, in this instance, it was um, effectively like a, a kid's album, so it can be Warm and Tender for the little ones. Um, anyway, I think that's it for my Livies. <laughs> and um, hopefully you liked those Livies. And if you did, please do the likes and subscribes and bells and whistles and all that sort of stuff. And I'll try not to knock off my rainbow thing. <laughs> I honestly thought it was going to flip onto the ground. Uh, and thank you very much for watching. Uh, I nearly <laughs> uh, And thank you very much for watching. Please take care of yourself. And hopefully I shall see you in the next one. Ciao.